On today's episode of Trucking Sustainably, we're talking batteries, specifically battery life cycle expectations, the impact on equipment acquisition business models, and the OEM's responsibility in battery management. Welcome to Trucking Sustainably. I'm Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Thanks for joining us. We're starting in the studio today because we're super excited to talk with Elizabeth Larson, Senior Vice President of Sales and Services at Volvo Energy about battery circulation. What is battery circulation? Well, if you think about the exponential growth of batteries that are coming into the transportation marketplace here over the next two, three, five, ten, 10, even 15 years, as battery electric vehicles, hydrogen fuel cell uh, electric vehicles, which are still electric vehicles powered by a hydrogen fuel cell, right? That electric powertrain has batteries. There's going to be a proliferation of batteries in transportation applications. What happens to them? How do you manage them? What happens? Is there a second life? Is there a third life? What does that mean to the ownership model? What does that mean uh, for fleets and their relationships with the OEMs? What's the OEM's responsibility in all this? Clearly, I have a lot of questions uh, that need answers. So happy to connect with Elizabeth Larson, Senior Vice President, Sales and Services, Volvo Energy. Here we go. Elizabeth, great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Excited to talk about battery circularity and battery management as a whole as we see more batteries coming to the marketplace with uh, battery electric trucks and potentially hydrogen fuel cell trucks. Uh, I want to just start off with what do you see the OEM's responsibility in battery management and then what's Volvo Energy's role in that plan? Thank you, Jason. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, Volvo or the OEM's responsibility is is quite huge when it comes to the batteries. Volvo Group has a, a, a very big ambition when it comes to helping to decarbonize the transport industry. And the transformation that we're looking at is one of the greatest this industry is ever going to do, I think. Um, and we have very high ambitions. I mean, the, the end game is 100% fossil free uh, operations, products, uh, use of products. So uh, we, I believe we have a huge responsibility and, and we, we need to take a larger responsibility in the, in the battery value chain. Uh, the battery is quickly becoming one of the most important components uh, in the truck. It's no longer the, the engine or the gearbox, right? It's right. the batteries. And, right. and with the batteries being so important, it's quite natural that we would want to take a, a bigger role in, in the responsibility for the batteries that we produce and use and uh, retire. Uh, so, uh, and, and I think if, if, you, if you take some numbers, uh, Volvo Group is today selling 300,000 trucks and, and vehicles. Um, most of those today are, of course, uh, fossil fueled uh, vehicles. Right. And tomorrow, will be uh, battery electric vehicles. So if you take those 300,000 and then you multiply by four to six to eight batteries on each one of them, you can see that Volvo Group will be a huge producer of batteries uh, and, and uh, uh, we will have millions and millions in these flows. So we need to take a responsibility of those flows. Um, one step in doing that is, is the quite recently announced a uh, battery manufacturing uh, factory in Maristad, mm -hmm. uh, a bit north of Gothenburg here, which you may have read about. So mm -hmm. we have a huge responsibility. We, uh, we are very much willing to take that as well. Very good. So, so what is the plan? How does this work? What is battery circularity and, and how do you see this impacting uh, the battery life cycle going forward? Well, battery circularity is about the entire life of the battery. Um, so we, we usually talk about uh, that, that, that a battery has one or two or maybe even three lives. Uh, and uh, where Volvo Energy comes in then is actually supporting um, both on the first life of the battery. Mm -hmm. So we, of course, want to make sure that the battery is performing optimally in its first life, in its vehicle uh, that is running, uh, that it has the optimal charging, that it has a, a good control of the battery, that we are getting all the the, the, the performance out of the battery that, that we want. So we're doing a lot of monitoring and, and, and analyzing of the data that we're receiving from the battery. So that's one support. Um, secondly, in, in Volvo Energy, we talk daily about the four 
ours. Uh, and, and that is basically then the, the refurbishing uh, and repairing. So when something happens to the battery, we should be able to repair it, put it back into the truck. Remanufacturing is, is keeping many parts of the of the pack in the BMS of the battery, but changing the module. So you get a uh, almost good as new battery uh, for a lower price than hopefully sending that back into the truck, uh, truck as well. Um, repurposing is actually putting the battery uh, into another application. I would love to speak more about that. Uh, and then we have recycling, which is our responsibility as a producer to make sure that the battery at the end of its life is taken care of in a responsible way. So the four R's uh, we work with daily, uh, three of them, uh, repairing, uh, remanning, recycling, uh, that basically comes with the, with the name of Volvo Group, right? It's in our heritage, it's in our DNA, right. but uh, repurposing is new. Uh, and, and this is where I'm, I'm very excited because here is where we believe there's a whole new area for the batteries that have lived in the vehicle to live another 10 years uh, into in a new products then, energy storage uh, systems. Um, and of course, when the battery lives longer, uh, that will also improve in the end, the TCO for the first life product. Uh, so, so that's how we started to look into the solution. But then when we looked into the solution, we realized this product, the battery energy storage systems, is really something that our customers need. Mm -hmm. It can support their charging. Uh, it can provide energy uh, optimization for their buildings or their microgrids. Uh, it can help them store green energy from solar, from, from solar panels on the roof. Um, so it's really a product which goes very, very much hand in hand with both our core values of environmental care, but also supporting the customers we have, the facilities that we own around the world, and will most probably help us find new customers as well. Right, right. Well, and that's interesting. And, and, and one of the first times that, I, that I've heard about uh, the battery investment from the customer side, right? If I'm investing in EVs, if I'm investing in electric trucks, the battery is coming along with that. But I could think of that investment as a uh, an overall investment in my overall sustainability plan, not just the truck, right? To your point, it could extend to, to those other applications because on-site storage is definitely, uh, of energy is definitely a, uh, a conversation. If you have solar, right? If you invest in solar, that energy has to live somewhere so that you can use it later. Um, Real quick, going back to life cycles, uh, you know, in the commercial trucking application, we definitely, at least uh, right now, want to be the first life cycle uh, in that battery's life, that first, that first, uh, first run, right, to get the most usage out of that battery. Do you have an idea of what the life cycle expectations are in heavy duty trucks? Uh, it depends a lot on the on the application, of course. It depends on temperatures. It depends on stop and goes. It depends on if you're charging and discharging uh, 100 to, to zero or if you're right. keeping on a sort of a state of charge, which is reasonable for the battery. And, and we know very much about that, actually. So we are actually engaging a lot into being able to advise our customers to use the batteries as sensible as possible by that prolonging the life of the battery. But uh, if I should give you a, a, an expectation, we usually say that in a, in a uh, you know, normal or normal to tough application, the battery would be around seven and eight years in its yeah. first application until it, it's, it's less optimal. You can, you can probably put it into a, a less demanding application still in a truck. Um, but but it, if it stays in the heavy duty application, it would need a lot of charging. It would lose a bit of its range, et cetera. So we, we usually count eight, eight years approximately. Right now, well, I mean, even that's amazing because it's it, it's about double the life uh, or the first run life of a uh, uh, diesel counterpart, which you think three to four years is typically the tipping point uh, across the industry where fleets will start to turn over diesel trucks. If I look at an investment now of seven to eight years and that's on the batteries, right? Often chassis and the trucks, I mean, they're super well built, uh, great trucks. Those can last even longer. And that kind of leads me to how do you see this impacting the business model? Um, when that seven or eight years comes and my battery life has diminished to the point where I'm ready to, I don't, do I do I repower and re-energize that? Do customers get a residual value for that? Do I keep the chassis and just put all new batteries on? I mean, how do you see this all working in terms of the the nuts and bolts business model? 
Yeah, I think this is still work in progress uh, within the group. We are seeing many new business models popping up and we find them super interesting. Uh, common for all of them is that you're starting to sell a service instead of a, a, a transactional product. Uh, so uh, I believe that we will probably in the future have a mix of business models, whatever suits our customers. And, and we are not... Uh, we are not decided yet on which one it's going to be, but the fact that we will be able to offer different kinds of solutions, I think that's a pretty safe thing to say. Um, when it comes to the battery lifetime, of course, in the ideal uh, case, the battery would last as long as the truck. And you said it yourself. I mean, the truck can live uh, for 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have fleets that, of course, want to optimize their usage and their residual value and change them more frequently. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, so, so it also depends on where is the technology going here? Will, will we have batteries that will do that? That's, that's very possible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but to answer your question shortly, to offer the customer more services is part of our plan and how exactly that service looks is it is it a monthly fee is it a a fee uh which is based on the power that is available uh is it mileage um i think there will be many different uh, types of businesses and 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 it will be according to what the customer is actually seeing as most useful yeah, I mean, as everything in the uh, trucking industry, there's no one size fits all, right? You have different levels of sophistication uh, within there. You have, to your point earlier, different applications, different ways the business is being run, and every fleet kind of needs their own their own way to handle that. One thing uh, I do want to follow up on real quick, going back to, I just find this really interesting, the repurposing and the storage aspect too then. So in those conversations and as you're talking with customers, and I know it's early days, but how much education needs to go into what customer needs to understand about that repurposing, about where the battery is going to go, either opportunities for them to put it back into operation in their own sustainability plans or options to get new power and send that elsewhere to where it can be more productive. How much are you having to educate customers in, in what that life cycle will mean? Well, Jason, this is what's so exciting with my job. Uh, I, I get to meet all kinds of customers. I get to meet customers that tell me what I need to do, right? And I also need to, I also get to meet customers that know very little and, but really want to learn. And uh, common for them, I think, is that they really want to learn how to decarbonize their business. Mm -hmm. And, and many of them are saying, help me do that. Uh, and the, the more you can help me do that, the more uh, business, in a sense, I will I will put in your lap, right? right so, yes. Um, yes, we do a lot of education and information because this is a new business. It's a nascent business. I mean, the the veteran in 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 the battery energy storage business, they are seven eight years old, right? So, <laughs> right, right. so of course we need to also educate ourselves. Right. But I think the the it's it's a very enticing concept if you tell the customers your batteries. Uh, will come to a second life, that second life will be a product that you may even want to use. Right. And that second, the second life product will help you reduce your energy cost, uh, use more green energy, um, get grid stability if your grid is not sufficient for what you need, et right. cetera, right? So I think it's a very enticing story. Right, right. Uh, one quick thing, uh, follow up there on what you said too, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, but we talk a lot about this as well, about that decarbon decarbonization. And to, to your point, it sounds like it's a, it's a journey, right? It, it's, it's baby steps along the way. It's figuring out what works for you. It, it's going to be what gets us to sustainable transportation uh, as opposed to just like a light switch moment. Is, is that what you see as well? Do fleets and customers want to be able to lower their uh, their carbon emissions today and, and look towards sustainability? Or how do you walk them through that decarbonization journey of what it means to, to move more sustainably? Mm. Yeah, it is for sure a journey. And, and I mean, we are not alone in, in making this uh, journey. We're all doing this journey, right? So, right. so if you look at the decarbonization of, of, of a customer depot, it's not only depending on the electric trucks that we can provide. Right. Do we have uh, charging infrastructure for the operations that the customers need to do? Uh, is, the, is the grid uh, capacity enough? 
for these operations. And of course, we are not owning the grid, right? So, right. so it is very much a, a work that we all need to do together. It's, it's not a, you know, the customers need to, to, to want to decarbonize, which I think we all feel. Um, the OEMs need to provide the opportunities for them to do so uh, with the products, with the chargers, uh, with energy storage. Uh, the policymakers and, and the authorities need to make it uh, easy uh, and, and seamless to make that transition. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a teamwork, I would say, and, and that will take time, uh, but we don't have all the time in the world. So there needs right. to be priority and pressure right. uh, put on all of us uh, to make sure these solutions actually get, uh, uh, get, uh, get in place. Right, right, right. Well, and, and you know, I, to that point too, uh, even from the North America viewpoint with Volvo, we're, we're, we're several years into, two, I, I, about two years into the Volvo uh, VNR Electric being in the marketplace as a product customers are buying, right? They're buying it and putting an application. We're past the pilot phasing. These are actual trucks that are being actually purchased and put in the applications. Um, in that regard too, a lot of the things you're talking about that are coming down the line, boy, this seems like it's really gonna impact the customer relationship. I mean, you've already mentioned services and working with the customers to decarbonize, which is a larger view than, uh, than historically in the, in the truck marketplace and the role you've played. How do you see that impacting the relationship and the way you work with customers going forward? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, we should remember that most of our customers want to do their share. Uh, and and uh, but they also need to make their business uh, work. Uh, so I think that's where we can provide uh, value uh, in helping them make this work. Um, our relationship with our customers is is one of our priorities, of course, uh, it will be. But it but it is a bigger scope now, right? So so I think that uh, the whole industry, not only the transport industry, but but uh, many industries are moving more towards, as I said, than uh, from transactional to actually uh, as a service kind of thinking, um, from from fossil to fossil free, from you know uh, how can we work more with uh, uh, the resources that we have. Um, so I, I, I'm super excited that, that we can actually, together with the customer, do this journey. That's right, that's right. Thanks so much for taking the time. I learned a ton, this is great. I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about here as we move forward and we'll connect with you again very soon. Thank you so much, Jason. Lots of great information there from Elizabeth. A lot to think about too, uh, and you can already start to see how EVs are impacting relationships, impacting the way you might think about vehicle investments, uh, and a lot more to talk about very soon. Thanks for joining us on Trucking Sustainably. We'll see you next time.